Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Bill Roach. This is another episode of Timeless Dialogues, where we talk about issues related to theology, philosophy, apologetics, politics, and really whatever I decide to talk about this week. And recently, I had somebody reach out to me, and they asked me if I could give you some of my favorite philosophy books as they relate to the discipline of metaphysics. So before we dive into that, I want to speak with you about a few things. First of all, it really helps me when people reach out to me. So if you have a question or a comment or you would like to see a video made, please go down into the comments below and write a topic. Or if you have a question, I will try to address it here on another episode of Timeless Dialogues. In addition, in order to help me continue to help you, it really helps me if you will please like and subscribe to this channel because it lets me know the types of videos that you prefer so that I can continue to make content that's going to benefit you, my listeners. So as we dive into today's topic, metaphysics, first of all, what is metaphysics? Metaphysics is dealing with those things which are above the physical, and it's dealing with things as they're discussing substances and accidents and causality and how properties exist and how things such as colors exist or numbers exist and all those different types of topics. It's really a philosophy of existence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume a couple of things. The first one is, is that I'm going to assume that you are familiar with just a little bit of philosophy on this because metaphysics is something everybody has to study, but you got to have a little bit of a working knowledge. So the first one that I would recommend initially is you got to know Plato's Republic and platonic notions of what are the forms and you have to know Aristotle's response to them and his understanding of metaphysics because what they're doing is they're helping us summarize the pre-Socratic philosophers and they're showing the great revolutions in ancient philosophy. But those are not my top five favorite metaphysics books. First one that I would recommend, which is a very short book, yet it's a very complicated book, and it's titled On Being in Essence by Thomas Aquinas. Now, this book here is 79 pages, including all the bibliographic information. And what it was is it was a book put together by Thomas Aquinas explaining specifically his revolutions that he brought to the discipline of metaphysics. Because you're going to hear a lot of people say things such as, well, Aquinas is nothing more than a baptized Aristotelian. And while there are similarities between Aristotle and Aquinas, there are significant differences. Namely, Aquinas argued that things differ by complex being. And he describes that in the notion of how they function in their particular essences. And what we have to see is, is that Aristotle claimed that things differ in non-being in some sense, but to differ by non-being is really no distinction at all. But what Aquinas does in this book is he lays out specifically how his understanding of metaphysics differs from that of his predecessors. And you see really the superiority of Thomistic philosophy and Thomistic metaphysics in particular, because you see that there are different kinds of being that differ by their very beings in and of themselves. Now, we're not going to go into a long and extended dialogue on that. That'll be a topic for another video. But I recommend this book because it's short, precise, to the point, and Aquinas used it to be as something that could be almost like a handbook for understanding his philosophy and the greater notion of what is Thomistic philosophy in its broader sense. Now, my second favorite one is titled An Interpretation of Existence by Joseph Owens. And Joseph Owens is writing within that Thomistic tradition. And what he's looking at is, is this concept of how do things exist? And he's going to look at the problem of existence, the grasp of existence, characteristics of existence, the cause of existence, the bestowal of existence, and the meaning of existence. And why I prefer this book versus some of the others is that what he's doing is he's taking that classic perennial philosophy of Aquinas that's also found in these great principles of being, and he's bringing them into the modern dialogue. And you're going to see how he's going to push back against many of the contemporary understandings of metaphysics. So Aquinas is going to give you a great revolution in the philosophy of metaphysics, whereas Joseph Owens is going to rightly apply that into the contemporary scene so that you can see how perennial philosophy is truly that. Namely, it's perennial because it's able to address things across all different times. Now, my third one in keeping with this is it's another book on really just 
the philosophy of finite being, which is another way of saying it's going to deal with the metaphysics of created, finite, limited beings, and what that means to exist as a created being. Now, my second favorite book on this is titled Introduction to the Philosophy of Being by George Klubertons. And in this book, he's going to look at a variety of topics here, and I just want to read off some of them as I pull it up here. He's going to look at, first of all, what do we mean by being? What do we actually mean by that term of being? And he's going to look at different things, like how do phenomenologists look at being? How do materialists, essentialists, existentialists, and so forth, look at the concept and answer, what does it mean to be a being? What does it mean to be real? And he also interacts with how is the Thomistic answer significantly different than these other approaches? Beyond that, he goes and he looks at things such as the analogy of being. What does it mean to say that there's becoming change in motion? He's also going to look at this notion of accidental changes as it relates to particular beings, the analogy of intrinsic being, extrinsic being, the goals or end telos of beings. And then he also gets into some of the issues related to divine being or the metaphysics of infinite being and the concepts of transcendentals. It's not like transcendental metaphysics in the sense of like we're meditating on something. It's the idea that there are principles or there's being as it relates to all the different types of beings, namely finite being and divine being and so forth that usually applies to things such as the true, the good, and the beautiful. But the reason that I like this book is that it's actually a significantly more detailed work on the matter. And he provides not only this perennial philosophy and the dialogue into the contemporary discussions, but he goes into great detail with them. So this may say that it's an introduction to the philosophy of being, but really what it is is it's a defense of the Thomistic philosophy of being in pretty significant detail within the contemporary conversation. Now, another book that I want to look at here is going to look at the metaphysics of divine being. And the reason that this is important is because when we study metaphysics, we don't only just look at finite beings, but we want to look at being qua being, namely the notion of being as it exists in God himself. Now, this is an older version of this book, and I think you can find more updated forms of it, but it's titled An Introduction to Natural Theology by Maurice Holloway. And some of the topics that he looks at in this book are things such as the nature and characteristics of natural theology. He looks at can God's existence be demonstrated, the nature and validity of a posteriori demonstration. Then he gets into the five ways of Thomas Aquinas. And then he looks at man's knowledge of the divine being. Can we actually form a true and meaningful, intelligent concept of God? He's going to look at the problem of naming God, the perfections of God. He's going to look at the attributes of God, how God relates to other beings and creation, the notion of divine providence and divine power. And then there's a whole bunch of appendices on how we actually deal with things such as agnosticism, different philosophical proofs for the existence of God, what he considers to be invalid proofs of God. He also interacts with modern issues such as God and existentialism, the notion of atheism, and he finishes it with a whole treatise on the beatific vision. I want to look at one other book here, which was really my fifth book as it relates to metaphysics, and it's a very contemporary introduction. And in fact, it's going to be something that feels more analytic, but it's going to defend that classic Thomistic understanding of the issues. And what it is, it's titled Metaphysics, a Contemporary Introduction by Michael Lukes and Thomas M. Crisp. And this is a great book because it delineates the contemporary issues as it relates to metaphysical realism or its contrary, namely metaphysical nominalism. It's going to look at concrete particulars of substrata, bundles, substances. It's going to look at propositions, the notion of necessity or the problem of necessity. And as that relates to it, things such as modality and possible worlds. It's going to look at issues such as causation, the nature of time. It's going to look at the notion of persistence through time, parts and wholes, indeterminacy, anti-realism, and so much more. Now, stop right there. One more thing that I want to do is I actually want to give you one of my all-time favorites. Now, I know I said only five, but I want to pick one more. 
and it's titled An Elementary Christian Metaphysics by Joseph Owen. And this is really a great book because he's looking at this classic perennial philosophy and he's laying out from the Thomistic Institute a strong defense of Thomistic realism as it looks at the notions of being and essence. But what it does is it brings it into a fully orbed epistemology and how we understand the notion of knowledge in and of itself. So again, this was a quick video that I wanted to make. I wanted to look at my top five, but you got six. If you like this video, if you find it helpful, please like and subscribe. Subscribe is actually more important than like, but liking will help my analytics. Because again, I wanna make videos that help and benefit you.